Lemke from Transforming Talent in our circle, and I'm here together with my buddy and the co-host of this discussion. Hi there. I'm um, oh, up because I'm up from the screen. Um, I'm Mehdi Tunsi, and I'm super excited to be joining Liz today in a conversation that we actually started a few weeks ago. So Liz, if you want to tell um, our listeners about how this all started, and, and then we can get cracking. I think that's awesome. Yes. So... Um, Mehdi and I met last, I guess now it's a long time ago. So we met at a conference. And one of the things that we had been talking about is like the yellow flag of what are some of those unspoken themes in diversity and inclusion that don't get talked about because they are um, perhaps not as um, not as KPI compliant um, than others. So our last discussion at the LND Cares Career Growth Summit was to to raise the issue of saying, you know, what are those just the, what are those themes that we don't talk about, but are actually really important. Um, and we started out with the aspect of you have a disability, but you don't meet the criteria. You ageism here. What are those different different elements? And so today we're meeting together on the International Women's Day 2021 to be talking about um, how do we really foster women in leadership. How are we talking about gender equality and um, what can we do to help others join in the conversation so that it's more than just tokenism of raising our hand and saying we'd like to do something? How do we actually help forward progress and real movement um, beyond a picture? That, that sounds like a, a perfect int introduction. Thank you very much for that. Um, Liz, and, and yeah, I'll, so I'll jump straight in because mm -hmm. um, so we've been having that idea of like, you know, really addressing those unspoken um, themes within DNI because as I said, like and that's one thing that probably almost, I mean, that irritates me a lot, is that notion of like compliance. Yes. DNI is not about compliance. It really is about, you know, I mean, I, from my perspective, and I might have a slight bias, I'll admit it. So it's about admitting like your unconscious biases and um, start yeah. with. But I strongly believe in the power of education and mm -hmm. educating people. So on one hand, it is about um, you know, being able to like, educate people and also address like, the, like, the real issues. You know, the, the, uh, mm -hmm. You've kindly shared with me some great articles that look at um, gender, like, what, it, what, I suppose genderism in, in the context of talent acquisition, but mm -hmm. also what's holding women back from like, making it to the, the sea level of organizations. And, the data is damning about the fact that it is not necessarily what's holding women. It's more the systemic, um, how do I put it in, in a nice way? Is the, the, the systemic um, approach to having environments and almost paradigms that in any case would not allow women to be able to make it to the C-suite, but more important and, and sadly, almost fueling that um, whole discur discussion or environment, putting the, the emphasis on not where the problem is and like, you know, the emphasis around, oh, but you know, women um, will have children and that's going to impact um, their career. And, and last time I checked, more often than not, when like, women had children, they also had a husband or a partner. There's someone which, helping out, yeah. <laughs> uh, which, yeah, which, you know, really poses the at, question. At, you know, at, at crucial points in time, but yes. Well, and I think I, I, I so appreciate that because, you know, for me, one of the aspects is, you know, how do we as women raise up with the women and full face value, absolutely 100% what we need to do. But I think one of the things that particularly this, this raising your hand up of, of course, who's going to raise their hand up and say, I want gender inequality. I think I'm lesser than because I'm a woman. No, not at all. Um, so how do we look at what is institutionalized and what are those behaviors based upon our socialization or just because it's what we're used to um, that get in our way to, to actual forward movement and progress. And so here looking at more of a, you know, what through a social lens of what's the norm um, and how are we being willing to break against that norm because it's a, because it really will bring a, a system and, a, and an organization forward. I remember back when I was studying psychology, totally honestly face value, our professors put in a series of um, 
of discussion groups around how psychology is losing face because it's becoming a women's study, a, a course that only females study. And um, it was about how can we sponsor more men in psychology so that psychology as a field of study doesn't lose clout, full face value. This was the top university in Germany. So, but it is falls under that aspect. What are those unspoken themes and DNI that don't get addressed? So is it addressing it wrong or is the way the, the question was, was formulated? And these, you know, you were mentioning the articles. And one of the things is if you break against those norms. So for example, uh, men as kindergarten teachers, it's the same, it's, you know, it's that same thing. If something's falling outside of the norm, it's actually harder than to get hired. So how are we looking at what are those norms as, we, as we're addressing jobs, as we're addressing roles that get in the way of what people's perception of what's, what work success looks like, so to speak, and how can we challenge those into saying, how are we creating and fostering real opportunities? I mean, I think, I think you spot, spot on and I'll, I'll advance on those, those articles because one of the articles that was fascinating was looking at that, um, a big consulting firm and you know um, that wanted and again I think it's are uh, we falling into the uh, um, tokenism of they wanted more female at the you know high level, level or ranks you know a, a, as partners um, a you know it'd be interesting why why is that you know where do you see the value and and because that, that really pushes you to lot understand so what's missing why do you think that this and the the reason they were given before looking at the before there was the data and the research done was that they felt that women, because they could not follow having a career with having like kids and like families, so family was the, the, the main reason. What the data showed, and that, that, that was fascinating for me, was exactly the, the opposite. That actually, women worked as um, long hours as men, but what they were doing that a lot of men chose not to do was be smart in terms of accommodating maybe you know and mm -hmm. their schedule around like, work and. What that implicitly did was it just disqualified them for mm -hmm. you know that promotion, that opportunity to moving into a lot higher ranks. So again, as you mentioned, I think it's about addressing the right question. It's not a case of oh how we don't have enough women, we want more women. It's what do we do or what you know defines us as an organization that is preventing women from being able to you know move within the organization. Why have have we created a system yeah. and an environment that you know intri intricately and just prevents women from like being recognized and as the same way like men would be recognized simply because they're being smart about how they go about the, their work. And, and I'm saying just a quick side note, and again, massive bias here. Um, and, and hopefully we'll share the article with like a, a lot of you. The idea of like working longer hours that makes you more performant or more qualified is something that I, I strongly, strongly am opposed to. I'm glad that there's now more and more data proving that mm -hmm. indeed having a, you know, working 60 hours a week does not make you um, more performant or, be, or anything of, of the kind. But a lot of organizations are still driven by that. And more often than not, it's male that will choose to uh, sacrifice their own private life, be it family or not, mm -hmm. for the sake of being able to demonstrate those longer hours. And again, I'm, you've noticed, I've not talked about them being better performing or being smarter, or, yeah. but simply falling into that mold of, I was here at 7 a.m. and I've left at 7 p.m. kind of mold versus women who actually will be able to de deliver as well, but chose also like, not to compromise their private life to be able to have like, a, a semblance of like, work-life balance, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is one of the big challenges. And this was, you know, this, this aspect of work smarter, not harder. I mean, good Lord, I don't know how long that hashtag has been around. Um, but it is that, that, you know, here as a former HR, it's like you're you're clocking in, you're not, you're not talking about someone's brain power. So here, how are we looking at what is the effectiveness in what we're doing? And how, you know, particularly in times of knowledge work, it's really a different paradigm of how we need to look at work. It's not just your physicality and that aspect of working remotely has brought that into light, uh, but really how are you looking at the work that you're doing? And there, there are those, those old paradigms of if I can see them at their desk and that they're working, 
And so here, one of the, the challenges, particularly for working mothers, is that um, they've really lost out. I think there was something like um, that women are 1.3 times more likely to leave the workforce due to the additional pressures just in general. And here, how COVID has really hit um, women, and pe women and people of color even worse. Um, to say, you know, here they've, they've not only been hit like black women by more deaths, they've also had to carry the burden of how, how are they raising up their families. And then they've also lost out in terms of career opportunities, losing their jobs, et cetera. And one of the big challenges we live in Europe, which is one of the benefits is we don't immediately lose our health insurance. But in the US, this is a real serious issue in terms of if you're no longer employed, your health insurance is also in danger. And so this is really the, the kind of the triple whammies that are hitting women right now, particularly due to COVID. And so there, there have been a couple of organizations like I4CP, I sent out the you know, uh, questionnaire as to what are, what are you doing your organization to look at flexibility, to look at different working structures, to look at um, healthcare for, for people's kids, et cetera. How are you being novel around um, doing more than just the lip speak of, we love women, we want gender equality. Again, it's important, but if you don't put actual actions behind it that will help people, it comes off even more plasticky than you perhaps may have meant it. Yeah, I, I, I think you're spot on. So for the, the sake of time, Liz, I think we're gonna leave it here one message we really really would love you to engage with us mm -hmm. um, whether you have questions whether you have a strong opinion on what we've just discussed please reach out we want to make sure that you know that conversation is an ongoing conversation that it is a very open conversation so you know there will be no judgment it is really about being able to discuss um what's happening, you know, backed by data. And then we want to be able to have some data alongside it. But we want to understand what it means from your perspective, how you feel about it. Um, do you think we're addressing something that doesn't need to be addressed? Uh, we're open to uh, um, any comments you might have. So by all means, uh, reach out to us. I couldn't agree more. And again, my name is Liz Lemke. This is... Meditancy. And we're just two people, friends, saying, okay, how do we take a conversation and bring it into actual forward positive movement? So can we say two beautiful people just for the generation? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and, and just a reminder, you know, for great women rulers, you know, we I, have I know a few that would agree with you. So yes. <laughs> exactly. So choose to challenge, and then we look forward to um, you, your questions, your um, your insights around what are some unspoken themes in DNI and joining in on the conversation. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.